I was done investing so much energy into trying to work for other people, and I was ready to invest into myself. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey, hey, guys. Welcome, welcome back to the show. It's Nikayla here, and I'm back with a solo. It's been a minute, right? Well, here we are in October. I can't believe it's October, y'all. Like, this year, it's just, I mean, I don't even have to say it. You know already. And we also know that the levels of unemployment right now are at an all-time high due to the effect that COVID has had on, first of all, human beings, and then supply chains, businesses, the way we run businesses, and having to close businesses because of the fact that that foot traffic isn't there or people are not able to patronize those businesses. So, In the last week alone, I have seen many friends and acquaintances get furloughed or laid off, fired, and my heart really, really, really goes out to everyone. So it's just been on my heart to do this episode. Um, I decided to share again my own story of unemployment and some tips that may be able to help you or someone you know get through this time as a side hustler who is now unemployed and doesn't have that full-time job to supplement the side hustle. Um, Share this with a friend or someone you know who might appreciate it. And yes, you will get through it. They will get through it. Please remind them that this too shall pass. Um, So let's let me share a little bit about my story for those of you who don't know, or maybe you've heard bits and pieces of it, but not the whole thing. Let's get into it. In 2015, I went through a seven month period of unemployment of not having a full time job. I was recently graduated from grad school. And yes, I went from May to December without a full time job. And now these were different circumstances. Obviously, it wasn't a pandemic. It wasn't a layoff or furlough. So there were different circumstances surrounding me not having a full-time job. However, it was still a challenging, sometimes discouraging time in my life. And I would hate for anyone to be going through this alone, feeling the same feelings of embarrassment, sometimes hopelessness, like I, like, will I ever find a job? feeling regret, like, should I have done X, Y, Z differently? Should I have explored a different career? Should I have worked in a different field? And so on and so on. I don't want you guys beating yourself up. So I'm devoting this episode to sharing what helped me to keep my head up and push forward when I was unemployed and how I stayed on the side hustle path through it all. First, a little backstory on how I came to be unemployed. Four years ago, was it four years now? Hold on, hold on. Let me do the math. Five years ago, (laughs) y'all. I was attending graduate school for my Master's of Business Administration at the University of Michigan Ross School of Business. In the summer between my first and second years of business school, I was an MBA intern at Google. I was really excited at the time to land. This was a coveted internship, so I was so excited to land Google, and I dived headfirst into the internship. I moved out to Mountain View for the summer. I was working in ad sales. Now, For most MBA internships, the goal and the expectation is that you will have such a great internship that at the end of the 10 to 12 weeks in your internship, you will be extended a full-time job offer from that company. That's how it's supposed to work. Well, that didn't happen in my case. Despite working hard, despite, you know, getting employee um, recommendations and awards that summer and doing all I could to seem like I was fitting into the culture because, you know, that's big in like the whole Silicon Valley tech world, doing everything I could to be noogly. Is that what they call it? I don't even know anymore. Googly. (laughs) I don't remember. Can you believe this was one such like an important part of my life? I promise you will be laughing one day too at this phase in your life. Um, So I was doing all I could to, you know, fit into the culture and really land that job. But in hindsight, that was not the right opportunity for me. So no matter what I did, it probably just was meant to be. And I'm glad that it happened that way. However, at the time, it didn't feel like this. 
Um, I did not get the full-time offer. I was devastated. I was pretty dejected. And I spent the rest of the academic year dodging my friends and my classmates' questions about what I was going to be doing post-business school. And then I graduated with no job in May of that year. From May to November, I would go on interview for job after job, only to receive even more rejections. At one point, after going through six rounds of interviews with Uber for, at the time they were launching Uber Eats, and I was going for a marketing role with Uber Eats, and I got turned down after six rounds of interview. And, you know, at that point, when you go for six interviews with the same company, like, that is exhausting. You really are like, I got to get this role. But I didn't get it. And that was a moment for me when it clicked. I said, enough is enough. I was done investing so much energy into trying to work for other people, and I was ready to invest into myself. So let me be clear here. Don't get me wrong. I was still looking for a job. I in no way meant that I was going to quit looking for jobs and just become an entrepreneur at that point. But I knew that I was so depleted in terms of self-confidence and self-empowerment that I needed to do something differently. Shortly after making that revelation, I began freelancing as an independent social media consultant because at this point, you know, money funds are running low and full transparency, even though at the time I was living with my then boyfriend, now husband, um, Nikayla doesn't like not having something to bring to the table, okay? I like my pockets to be full. (laughs) I like to have money in my bank account and there's no way in hell that I was not going to find a way to bring some income in. So that's what I did. I started freelancing as a social media consultant. At that point, I tapped into my network for that role. And I went and did some freelance work for an organization that I once was a part of. To So it's called MLT, and I've mentioned it many times, Management Leadership for Tomorrow. I started freelancing with them as a social media consultant. Boom, tap into your network, make sure you have some money in your pocket. While I was doing that freelancing, still looking for jobs, I dusted off my old blog and started writing again. Now, this process came about with me having to do a survey, like I talked about in a previous episode. Because I was so depleted, I had to reach out to friends and just ask them, listen, what am I good at? Because I really didn't remember. I did an anonymous survey and I just asked them to pour back into me. Tell me, where do you see me working? What, you know, what, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What skills should I lean into? And through that survey, it was made clear to me that, duh, I need to lean into my writing and everything that I enjoy doing that I ignore because I'm like, oh, this is, I can't get a job after this, off of this. Like, I'm not going to get hired from this. So I don't have time to do that. But once I return to that, in that process, I regain my confidence. This was so important because, again, if job hunting knocks away your confidence, that's going to present itself in interviews. That's going to present itself in, you know, your day-to-day mental health and how you feel about yourself and being able to get out of bed, being able to have the motivation to search for jobs, to apply and customize resumes because you know you can't just send in the same resume and cover letter for every, cover letter for every job so that means that you have to be motivated to do this work and get up every morning and like start start this marathon so regaining that confidence whatever you need to do to get that back you have to do it it's not easy getting rejected week after week i know that from experience And as I recommitted to something that I had always been passionate about, I was able to develop authentic and interesting content online. Within months of freelancing, I landed a job working for NPR, National Public Radio. So it was actually my freelancing plus me starting to blog again and put out my own content online, aka establish my personal brand, show how I think, show how I write, show my creative side. That ended up landing me my job as a senior manager of social media marketing at NPR. I would have never gotten that job if I didn't affirm myself 
reestablish my confidence, stay true to myself, and lean into my natural gifts. But, 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 big but here. By the time I started working full-time again for NPR, I was already knee-deep in building up my personal brand. It was something I was transparent about. It was on my resume at this point because I felt it was such a testament to who I was and what skills I would bring to a company in a social media marketing role. In addition, I had no plans to stop building my personal brand because I had already decided to always invest in myself as much as I do a job. I knew I was not going to let that go. The side hustle spirit that I had cultivated during our employment was officially cemented in me. Hey guys, it's Nikayla here with a quick word from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life and all of the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired and express yourself, not to mention keep your business organized and thriving until you're able to hire more help. And now Skillshare is offering two weeks free for Side Hustle Pro listeners. I recently took a new Skillshare class called Storytelling for Leaders, How to Craft Stories That Matter, and I just found it really helpful as I think about how I want to improve my skills as a storyteller and enhance the stories I bring you on this podcast every week. What I love about Skillshare is that it offers membership with meaning. You can really get a lot of value from these classes with so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives. Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash hustle. The first 1,000 people to use the Skillshare.com slash hustle link will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. So go ahead and again, that's Skillshare.com slash hustle. Knowledge can be really powerful. And knowing that others have gone through experiences similar to yours, life-changing. Introducing Her Body, Her Story, a new podcast from Flow, the popular period tracker, health, and well-being app. Listen to real stories from women who intentionally changed their approach to health and came out on the other side to live a happier and more fulfilling life. In each episode, licensed therapist and host Mina B talks with Flow users about their health experiences and demystifies taboos around cramps, heavy periods, mood swings, anxiety, sexual well-being, self-care, and more. She also gets tips from doctors and medical experts for living in harmony with your cycle, body, and mind to improve your well-being. Get early access inside the app spelled F-L-O or subscribe to the Her Body, Her Story podcast on any other medium where you listen to your favorite podcast shows. Throughout the experience of unemployment, I learned some valuable, valuable lessons that I want to share with you today. So here's what the experience taught me about keeping your head up and pushing forward. Number one, know that this moment and any moment when things don't work out the way you had hoped is just a moment of redirection. My first instinct was to wallow in self-pity. And I did. I had moments of that. I had moments of crying and just saying, you know what, I'm just, I'm not good. They're right. I'm not, I'm not this. I'm not that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever going to get a job. Can you believe that? Like, that's what I was saying to myself. You sometimes have to tell your own self to shut up. Like, you cannot listen to the words you tell yourself that are negative. I at the time so felt so ashamed and like every rejection and no was an indication of my self-worth what i had to do what i had to learn was that failure is an event it's a mere moment in time that will pass it is not a personality trait and by the way i heard that for the first time on a podcast by my leak teal that resonated with me when she said that failure is an event it is not this character trait that belongs to you. So shake that off. Shake that off and understand that that moment is gone. It's gone now. Let's let's move forward. Don't put on that failure badge like you are now permanently a failure and this is part of your identity. It is not. A rejection, a furlough, a layoff does not define you. So that's number one. Get that in your brain. 
Number two, nurture your side hustles, you guys. I've shared this story before as well, my early podcast about this experience of not getting the Google offer, and I'll keep saying it. I once heard an executive remark, don't get your ass confused with your chair. He was cautioning that no one is immune to being fired. So what I took away from that is that you can never get too comfortable at any job, even if it seems super secure. You can never get too comfortable. That means you have to nurture your passions outside of work or even nurture the skills you have at work that you you want to be able to use at any other role that you go to. You are the talent, okay? You're not the talent for that job. You are the talent. So at this moment, whether you are un, whether you are unemployed, employed, or what have you, you need to be thinking, what is the brand of me? Who is the brand of Nikayla is what I started to work on in that summer of 2015. I also think of it as kind of the Bazoma St. John effect. Now, if those of you who don't know Bazoma, she is a very fabulous, inspiring uh, marketing executive that has had very high profile and impactful roles at companies such as Apple, Uber, and is now at Netflix. Now, she invested in the brand of Bazoma. So, and she's at Badass Bows on Instagram. And, you know, if she was just focused on, oh, I want to make my, I want to do my role. I want to do my job really great. I want to be promoted here. And I want to be known as the best senior VP of marketing at Apple. She might still be at Apple. Or if she were to get furloughed, she would not know what to do with herself because her identity was so ingrained in being this XYZ title at this XYZ company. Instead, she started building the brand of her. She let people know what she stands for, what she does, and she builds her opportunities from there. So brands are attracted to you when they know what it is you do, what it is you're capable of, because you have made that so clear. So start building your personal brand. In addition to in addition to nurturing your side hustles, because your side hustles could potentially bring in additional income, but if not, Building your personal brand is so important for getting that next opportunity. Um, In addition to building that personal brand, start posting, you guys. Do not suffer in silence. No one can help you in silence. One of the ways that um, I have gotten jobs and opportunities is when I started posting what I think and what uh, my insights are about the industry that I work in on LinkedIn and on Twitter. As people share and interact with your post and see, it's kind of like you establish yourself as a thought leader in these particular industries. And then opportunities do start to come to you. This actually works. You have so, so much room to go out there and establish your territory on these social media profiles. But first, you have to not suffer in silence. You have to put yourself out there and, number one, let people know that you're you've been furloughed or you're open to opportunities or you're open to freelance opportunities because no one can help you in silence. Number two, then instead of waiting for the opportunities to come for, to you, you start doing the work. You just start doing side projects in that field, highlighting the side projects so people can see, oh, when I hire her, you know, that's the kind of work she can produce. Oh, this is really interesting. Or, um, Oh wow, I never thought about that. I need to hire her for this. I have I have this thing or I know such so and so who's been talking about doing a similar project that she's just done. Those wheels start turning when you start posting and you start highlighting your skills. So sharing what you create, whether it's a physical thing that you're creating or an online thing, start sharing the fact that you can do this skill. Um also pay attention to who is hiring. All right? We are seeing the ways the companies that are doing well and thriving during COVID versus the companies that are not. Obviously, companies that are very digitally established, who are online, who do most of their business online, are doing better. So how can you position your skills, make them transferable for some of these companies, and just go after them? Don't just go after any company. Make sure these are companies that are hiring. Again, tap into your network. Um for freelance work. So in addition to, you know, looking at long-term roles, 
reach out to people who you may be able to do freelance work for. So, for example, if you worked for a company before and you know that right now they're not able to bring on new hires, but they are open to project by project freelance work, don't be above reaching out, pitching yourself. You might be working at a lower rate. So, for example, in 2015, when I was freelancing, I was working at a lower rate. However, that was still money in my pocket that went towards bills and expenses. And that's all that I needed. I lived below my means and that money in my pocket was very helpful. Now, also start learning about possible revenue streams. So as you're side hustling, start to research and understand how people actually make money in your business from that side hustle if you're not making money already. And if you are making money, double down on what it is that makes you money in that stream. All legal above board, of course, but yes, double down on the legal ways to make money. And finally, think about pivoting. Is it time for a new career? Is it time where you can invest in a short online program or um, a boot camp or something that will take the skills that you currently have and up it to another level where you can pivot into a new field? Perhaps this is the time, hopefully, if you have some savings or if you have a cushion to start thinking about things you've always wanted to do, but you've said to yourself, hey, I have this great job, you know, That sounds interesting, but I just don't know when I would do it. Maybe now can be an opportunity. And again, I say this with uh, with all the love and support in the world. I know none of this is easy. Nobody was expecting any of this. So the times are hard and each day is a fight to just make sure that your mental health stays on track and that you don't get bogged down by this horrific news cycle and all that's going on in the world. I don't take any of that for granted. I just hope that some of this can be helpful to you and that you will share it with someone who it can be helpful for as well. Um, I'm no HR expert, you guys, but this is what helped me to put one foot in front of the other and keep hustling um, when I was not sure when I was going to get my next opportunity. Most importantly, unemployment helped me to become a side hustle pro where I was once ignoring my side passions and the things that I enjoy doing and just solely focusing on working for someone else. It finally allowed me to see, hey, Your dreams and the things you enjoy doing are important as well. And every company started with one person's ideas. Why can't you do the same thing? So although I knew I still wanted another job to support me, I also, that was the first time when I started to think about entrepreneurship as a viable path. So I hope and pray for you that as you get through this season of uncertainty, you know that one day you will be through this moment, that this too shall pass, and that you start doing whatever it is of these steps that I shared that can help you to just move forward to that next thing, to bring in income, and to keep that head up and push forward. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to hear more from me, let me know in the comments when I post this on Instagram if you enjoyed this episode, and I'll talk to you next week. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six foot Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you'll receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.